For noise unto the Lord, give glory to him for the Lord deserves to be praised. For he is alive, he is risen this day. The Lord God Almighty is alive. Anywhere you are, I want you to lift up your handkerchiefs and wave unto the resurrected Jesus. The Lord is alive, he is alive, he is alive. Some people, God, unless you wake them, they cannot wake up. Some worship stones, some worship rivers, some worship trees, but we are worshiping the living God. My Lord is alive this afternoon. He is alive, he's alive, he's alive in my spirit, he is alive in my soul, he is alive in my body. Hey, hey. Oh, he's alive. Way more to him this morning. Amen. He's alive. Oh, 
settle in her friend forever, forever, forever.
to the Lord this afternoon. This morning, this day, this night, anywhere you are, at the sound of my voice, wave out to the Lord. family, may somebody make a joyful noise into your neighbors, go near your families, tell them that the dead Jesus Christ is alive today. The resurrected Jesus is alive. The resurrected Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all humbly have our seat and let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you again and in our Resurrection Sunday service. Hallelujah. He is alive. Indeed, he changes not. He is still the same. King of kings and the Lord of lords, the ancient of the days, our reigning and our ruling king, the one who was and who is and who is going to come. What a manner of man is thee. The one and the only man that death could not hold him into captive. The reason came. The resurrected Messiah. Today we will crown our seven days fasting and prayers with a prayer. And again we deliver the Easter message. Hallelujah. The Lord has been so good. The Lord has been so faithful. If there is any day to rejoice, if there is any day to make noise, and if there is any day to shout, if there is any day to identify yourself as a child of God, then permit me to submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is this very day. That what history has never heard before and recorded before is what we are experiencing. And there is something special about this day. There is something special about this day. So for that reason, shall we all turn our Bible right now? We are going to pray today a little bit. And after that, we share the word together. Hallelujah. If death could not hold him into captive, then I cannot show that nothing here on this earth can hold you into captive. If death, that everybody is afraid of, couldn't hold him into captive, then I can assure you that nothing can hold you into captive. I want as many that have come to life to be part of the service this morning, to be alive in spirit. Hallelujah. Don't just lie down there and sleep. Be alive in spirit. Be alive in spirit. Are you here with me? Okay, then let me see if we are alive in spirit. Let me see. The media man will let me know whether you are alive in spirit. If we are sleeping, I will know. If we are alive also, I will know. Hallelujah. We came this morning specially for you. Um, after only those people that are alive in spirit. If Jesus is alive, then you can't be dead in spirit. If Jesus is alive, then you cannot have a lackadaisical attitude. You can't have a lukewarm spirit. You will be alarmed and you'll be alive for the resurrected king of kings. Hallelujah. I just want to feel the people that are alive online before I can go on. Hallelujah. Are you alive or you are still sleeping? I want 50 people to type, I am alive before I move on. I want 50 people to come and let us know that I am part of what we are doing before we can go on. You just type, I am alive. 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 Mama Dufie, just type, I am alive. Just type, I am alive, and we can move on. Till 50 people respond to the church service, we are not moving. Hallelujah. Nobody should sleep. Today is the resurrection Sunday. I can imagine. If not sister coronavirus or brother coronavirus, this place would have been boiling. 
Akosi. Oti says that he is alive. Akosi, your hand says, she said that she is alive. I'm hearing all of you from there. Thank you, Nana. All of them say that, Kofi Anthony, you are alive. I need 50 of you. If not, you are not moving. You see, alive. I want only people that are alive. If not, we are not moving. Prosper says that he is alive. And as Tina Amobuzia, she also said that she is alive. If not, we are not moving. Mrs. Setfrimpong says also she is alive. Mama Dosu, you are alive. I'm here with all of you. I see you. If you are sleeping, how can you have church service? Stand up and let us rejoice Jesus Christ. Vivian, Minister Vivian is alive. I want all people that are alive with us this afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you alive? If you are alive, wake them up. Wake the children up. Don't let anybody sleep. Today is deserted Sunday. Oh, I am excited. I am excited about Jesus. Masa Kaparus. Inderi Ashantarabaraba. Aha, Mama Evelyn said that she is alive. I am here right now here with you. Nana is giving me all the information. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Resurrected Sunday, he is risen. You can't sleep. If death could not hold him into captive, why should you sleep now? Onyaya Oheme said that he is also alive. I want only the people that are alive. Reverend Ben is fry also that she is alive. Reverend Frank Nimo Ghana, he also said that he is alive. We want people that are alive to be here before we can continue anything. You see, alive? Is your Jesus alive or your Jesus is still there? Is still still here in the, in the tomb? Is he being buried um, after 50 people? Mama Millie also said that he is alive. I am alive with my family. Thank you for being alive. Hallelujah. Everyone that is alive, you just type he's alive. The media man will let me know you are alive. And then we move on. We have got about 26 people. I'm, I've told the people that are alive. Within the next five, ten minutes, you are going to enter to a time of prayer. And then we hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Reverend Wisdom's wife, Emilia, she is also alive. Wake all of them up. Wake all of them up. Just type I'm alive and we move on. Hey, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He is risen. Hey, my princess Susanna, Bwachi and the family, you are alive from the dead. Hey, he is Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord for every need.
Because he is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. He is Lord. Every name. Magnifies the Lord, and my soul praise His name. The rock of ages, the ancient of all the days, the lilies of the valleys, the rose of Shalom. I am that I am. You are Lord. We prostrate before thy greatness. We fall under the supremacy. We bow before thy authority, O Lord. For every knee bow and every tongue come first. That you are God. This afternoon, your church, we bow. The word bow. Because of even one plague, greater and mightier people. Oh God, they are nowhere to be found. Only you alone. Only you alone. Only you alone. Only you alone. Thank you. That indeed you are alone. We bless you, we worship you, we honor you, and we adore you. For all death could not hold him captive if he did a grave.
now to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, let us read from the verse number 1 through 7. Matthew chapter 28. Let us hear the word of God. Now after the Sabbath and the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and, and became like dead men. But the angel of the Lord answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen. Underscore that word for me if the Bible is yours. For he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen and ask it again from the dead and indeed he is going before you into Galilee there you will see him behold I have told you hallelujah hallelujah ladies and gentlemen you can kill him the first day Friday Bible says that everywhere was calm, quiet. And the Saturday, the whole land of Israel, Jerusalem, became mute. Hey, hey, will this man rise up? Will he rise up again? Will he rise up again? Everywhere calm. Prior to this, the priest went into King Pilate that they should guide the tomb. So that this man will forever remain there in the tomb. Because when this notorious man was alive, he told the disciple that I will die. And the third day, I will rise up again. Therefore, give us a secured, strong, fortified people to go and secure the tomb. If not, the disciples will come in and steal the body. And let her go and fabricate it and fabricate it and then make a noise that he is alive. And the king told them that you have the best soldiers. Take the sophisticated ones, the hard ones, for them to go and guide the tomb. But ladies and gentlemen, they didn't know that any time that the supernatural of the Lord touched anything natural here, there's no natural man that can stand Anything that is supernatural. Bible says that in the Saturday, they went in there. But on the Sunday early in the morning, an angel of the Lord was dispatched from eternity to time to come and roll the stone. That they think that they have highly secured it. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two main things that the angel declared, and I love it. That he is not here. He is risen. Because he told you that he will rise up. And the word has been fulfilled, that he is risen. Today, back in one of the most powerful historical days in the lives of men, I'm here to challenge you by the message of God that nothing of you can die if you believe in Jesus. One, the address has shifted from the graveyard to the living room. When somebody died, the only place you can search for the person is the cemetery. But as I'm talking to you right now, 
this man's address has changed. He is not here. He has gone ahead of you. It is my prayer that the one that you are believed, the one that you serve, go ahead of you this year and direct every affairs concerning your life. Sometimes we think we are too smart. Sometimes we think we know. But unless the Lord God Almighty go before all of us, things will become very difficult for us. Hallelujah. So the angel announced that he is not here. The guys forgot themselves that where they think that they are secured, where that they are sitting and guided, belong to someone. So he said that, okay, I have no problem with you. You can guide this place. But the truth is, I want to put one of my legs down. And Bible says that when one of the leg of God touched down, there was an earthquake. It is my prayer that the hand of the Lord come down upon the life of somebody to shake things that are not shaking, to move things that are not moving, to move things that are not actually taking any space in your life. It is my prayer that this Sunday and the rest of your life, the shaking God shake anything that has kept you stand still. Hallelujah. They were guiding, but fear has got hold of them. There is a shake. There is a divine shake. And I still this shake at the right time in our lives. Just like there is a shake of coronavirus all over the world. There is going to be another shake that no government can stand. Hallelujah. Social distance cannot help that shake. I want to shake, tell you that people hugging and shaking hands cannot stand that shake. There's going to be a supernatural shake again on our planet Earth. A day is going to come and the owner of this world will shake this world. If he was able to shake the tomb and the guys couldn't stand, I want to assure you this one was for only one man to come out. But this time he's going to come up with his archangels. And let me assure you, no one can stand. Hallelujah. Only today is the day of salvation. There is a shake. And the shake is coming. And I feel the shake and I sense the shake. Any blessed day when you wake up and you look at the news, you listen to any other thing. It is telling you that there is a shake all over the world. Hallelujah. Do you really know him? But there was a purpose of the resurrection. And he said that he is not here. He told you he has gone ahead of you. As a matter of fact, he is there before you. Go and tell the disciples that the man is not dead, but he is alive. This year, I came up with another version that I have captured it. He is risen. Your Jesus is alive. Ladies and gentlemen, any tomb of any great man that has ever lived here on planet Earth, with any religion, any tomb that you go and visit, you see the date of birth and the date of death. In between the date of birth and the date of death, there is a dash in between the date of birth and the date of death. And the dash is the how many years, the life you live here on this earth. And as I'm talking to you right now, the only man that till today we can find his date of death is our Lord and our Master Jesus. Because every blessed year, we celebrate the living Jesus. Every blessed day, we celebrate the living Jesus. As I'm talking to you right now, if you go to Guntama Buddha, if you go to Hare Krishna, if you go to Maharaj, if you go to Islam, if you go to any part of any religion, you will go and still find the abodes dead, rotten, and decayed. But there is one man, the Bible says that when they enter into the room, when they enter into the tomb, they saw that practically, vividly, possibly, there was nothing there to prove that he is there. He has gone ahead of you. Hallelujah. That is the Jesus you are serving. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. The reason why you can rely and depend and lay on him is that he is alive. He is risen. He is risen. Therefore, there was a purpose. 
for that resurrection. There was a purpose for the risen Jesus. I've been teaching purpose for the past 30 years and I'm still saying that anything that you can see, you feel, you touch and you sense, there is a purpose for that. Therefore, if you miss the purpose of this very day, you have missed the resurrection. It's not just only shouting and screaming and making noise that he is risen. He is alive. He is alive. Without knowing the reason why he resurrected. Hallelujah. There is a purpose for the resurrection. He resurrected for a purpose. Last Friday, we learned something very powerful that sin activated death. It is sin that caused death for death to become alive. Death has always been there. Death has always been present, but useless, hopeless, and powerless. The only thing that can activate death is sin. And the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. So death is a result of sin. And sin is the activator of death. And therefore, if Bible says that he sinned no not, he had no sin, then what can kill Jesus? What could have killed him? Because Bible says that there was no sin in him. There is no way that this man can die. So before he can be able to die, he need to go out to the whole world and collect sins in his body so that he can die. Because where there is no death, where there is no sin, there is no death. And where there is no death, there is no sin. Therefore, the living Jesus, the holy Jesus, can never die. He is alive. People, I say he is alive. Church, I say he is alive. If you hear me, I want you to shout and scream. I hear you. One of the greatest spiritual significance of the purpose of the resurrection is that he did that just to prove that he has victory over sin. To prove Jesus' victory of sin. The sin have no power over me. Because I am not a sinner. There is no one sin in me. Therefore, I am here to prove to sin that anybody that come to this tomb, anywhere that it is, that because the reason why they were able to stay there was that sin was found in them. But so long and so far that there is no sin in me, I cannot die. I refuse to die. I am coming to overcome what is called death, hallelujah. To prove Jesus' victory over sin. That sin have no power over him, hallelujah. He didn't just resurrect it. He is the resurrection. It is not only resurrection that he resurrected. But he is the resurrection. And any man or woman that put his or her trust in him, even though when you die, you will resurrect again. Hallelujah. For I am the resurrection and life. I am. For I am. To overcome the power of sin and the power of death. To overshadow it. To overshadow it. Hallelujah. God raised him from the dead, freed him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. It was impossible. It was impossible, practically impossible for death to hold him, to keep him in the grave. Why? You can keep only somebody who is a sinner in the grave. But the one that no sin cannot find in him, he cannot die. This year is a resting day. It is my prayer that you move from the level of fear of death and let the power of resurrection activate and gather you as never before 
2020, hallelujah. What the whole world is afraid of now, this very hour, is death. The whole reason of the pandemic shutdown is what? Death. But, Masaka Parupadia Santaria. Hey, Atarababa Akabusk in the you. Hey, Apara Kadus. Even if coronavirus don't kill you. Man, ta 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 ta. Me Aparaba Kusiat. If you really want to live, that is better you run to Jesus Christ, the resurrected one. This very day is the day that I see. Jesus Christ making fun of death, making mockery out of him. Na, 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 na. That you have no victory. That you don't have no power over me. Hallelujah. Because I have overcome. As a matter of fact, you need to leave this planet Earth and go back to grave and tell me that grave, you cannot also hold me into captive. Because the living Jesus Christ is in my heart. It's a day to overcome any fear of death. Many at times, when we come to meetings like this, how we wish that everything worked together for us. But I want to assure you that Jesus Christ yesterday, he is still the same today. The man is alive. The man is alive. He is not going to disappoint you. He is not going to forsake you. He will hold you until the end of the age. The Lord God Almighty is with you. There's a purpose to prove to death that where lies your victory. Tell me right now to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse number 54. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 54. So when this corruptible has put on incorruptible, incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a written scripture it is written in the scripture that death one day will come. But it is only when the corruptible has put on the incorruptible, when the perishable has put on imperishable, when the one that can corrupt has put on the one that cannot corrupt, it is there that the say will come to reality. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord and our Master Jesus. Hallelujah! Thanks be to God. Thanks be to Jesus. Who has given us victory over death? Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe in him, you become undiable. Nothing kills you. Even if you die right now, you have a place. But if you don't know him, if you die, you will know where you are going. Then the written, what is written cannot be fulfilled in your life. You cannot say that death, na, 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 na. You can't make mockery of death. Simply because you are afraid of death, not because of anything, because of sin. Hallelujah. Therefore, leave sin, stop sinning, so that any day when you see death, you can look at death and say, death, na, 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 na. You have no victory over me because I've overcome you. For the wickedness of sin is death. I want you to rise up this afternoon that if death could not hold Jesus Christ into captive, and the scripture is being fulfilled that death, where is your victory? Then you need not to be afraid of death. Either COVID-19 or COVID-20 or 50, 
Every COVID that will come that will destroy man is to destroy man. The death itself is not all that fearful. But after death, after death, if you can trust in him and you believe in him and you can lean on him and live according to his word and according to his principles, then you can boldly put your hands in your chest and also look at death and say, death, na, 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 na. you are not excited this afternoon simply because of sin. If you know you are not a sinner, you look at death and death. Any day when death is coming, you say, death, na, 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 na. Where lies your strength? Where lies your victory? Where lies your power? Hallelujah. But so far as and so long as that you are afraid of death, it means there is a sin that is hidden somewhere. He resurrected to prove victory over sin. You can never feel cool if you are still in sin. Any day when you come to church, you alone, you have a problem. There's no joy because of sin. The greatest purpose of the resurrection is to prove that death has no victory. Death has no power. But death has power through only sin. Death has victory through only sin. Therefore, if I can stop sin, all kinds of atrocities, now sin has become modified, model, model sin. Model one. We don't call sin a thing. Sin. Now when we sin, we say you have made a mistake. Sin is sin, ladies and gentlemen. We sin against the Holy God. And you we wrong our fellow brothers and sisters. The only thing that can separate you from your father is sin. For my hands are not short. Neither my ears are so heavy that when you pray, I won't listen to you. My hands are not short at all. It's not the shouting and the screaming. But it is your iniquities. It is the sins that you commit. That is why I am far away from you. And this sin that let me be far away from you is the reason why I resurrected. To overcome it. So that you know that you have also overcome sin. Hallelujah. The resurrected Jesus. The risen Jesus. To prove Jesus' victory of sin. Over sin. That sin have no power over any true child of God. You don't have to, but we choose to. You don't have to. It's a choice. Any man, woman that sin, you choose to. You don't have to. Because you have overcome it. For he who that is born of God has overcome sin. Hallelujah. You don't have to. You don't have to. I don't think it is sin. That invited you to go to Penimart for the go batch off. I don't think that when you read Penimart, the sin told you that here is where go batch off lie is. It is for you yourself, your desire and your appetite that brought you in there. Sin have no power over you because of the resurrected Jesus. Hallelujah. Purpose is the reason why something exists. If there is something that is called resurrection, then what is the purpose of it? We will come and shout he is resurrected without knowing the reason why he resurrected. What is the purpose of it? The reason why anything at all exists, we can see, we can feel, we can sense, we can talk about that there is a purpose for that thing. And the second purpose of the resurrection is to restore mankind's power. Of death. If I have overcome, then you will also overcome. If you tell me that you are powerless, you can't do anything. For the things that I love to do, I can't do them. And those things that I hate to do, I see myself doing them. Then Apostle Paul continued to say that, then why let me do the things that I hate doing? Just now that I know. That there is a tendency, there is a power, there is a force in me that drive me to do the things that I hate doing. This year resurrection, if resurrection has come, it is telling us that you, you have power over death. You have conquered death. Therefore, don't be afraid to die. Don't be afraid. It is only when you know you can make a very good account to your master. 
Then any time the master comes and calls you, you are not afraid. Don't let the shutdown and the lockdown and the social distance keep you in your room. And say that now, there is no church. Nobody sees me. So I will do what I want to do. Let me tell you. Reverend Bernice must not see you. The pastors need not to see you. God should it, is there's no need for God to reveal to any prophet what you are doing. But there is a master. That Bible says that when the doors were being shut, before they realized, he entered there and said, peace be unto you. If he doesn't need key to enter into a room and his resurrection can appear, people, the thing is very scary. Bible said that for the fear of the Jews, the disciples locked the door and they shut the door and they were inside putting a strong bar behind the doors that nobody should go in, nobody should come out. But as much as the door was locked, he still appeared. You be in your room because you have been shut down and do what you need to do. If he can appear to the disciples without knocking, then he has seen whatsoever that you are doing. The power of the resurrection brings awareness that he can appear and disappear any time, any day in your life. If no man has seen, he has seen you. Hallelujah. You have power over it. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. God says that I am weak. I can't do it. I can't handle it. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. To restore man's, mankind's power of death. The power that you lost because of rebellion, because of disobedience, because of sin, that Adam gave the chance and the right to lose the power over death. He resurrected to give that power back again to mankind. You have power over death. Church, I say you have power over death. I say you have power over death. You have power over death. You need not to be afraid of death. You have power over it. What man lost is what he came to give to us. You have power over it. Romans chapter 8 verse number 11. But if the spirit of him who raised, let's just say raised, Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. If that same power that raised him from the dead lives in you, how many of you really believe that you have the spirit of the Lord? If the spirit of the Lord is in you, then the same power that brought him out of the grave is that same power that has come and lived in you. Hallelujah. This is the superpower. This is not a magnet. This is the superpower. This is not magic. This is the superpower. Many men are searching for so many powers, but there is a power that is the ultimate power that God has given to his children. The power to overcome death. Hallelujah. You think your body is weak. Your body is so weak that you want to appease the body with sin. Ladies and gentlemen, if that power is living in you, when sin is coming, what activates death is coming, when that power of God is in you, because of resurrection, you are free from the power of sin. Hallelujah. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. God doesn't have spirits. God has only one spirit. God doesn't have spirits. God has only one spirit. If that spirit that quickened Jesus Christ from the grave lives in you, then that same power will quicken your mortal bodies. Don't sit down and say that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Stand up and watch and pray so that you don't fall into any temptation. Don't let lockdown and shut off lock your spirit down. They can lock the body, but they can't lock the spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit is too much for you to lock it. If we are not careful, 
after this they shut down. Many people love will go down. Many people's zeal in the taste of God is going to be worse. Not because of anything, because nobody is now there to challenge them. Ladies and gentlemen, the spirit has not departed. Look through our fasting time, the scripture that I was sending. Do not cast away your spirit. Renew a right spirit within me. There is a spirit of God that dwells in you. That can quicken your weakness. That can quicken your mortal body. If you know you are weak, submit to the super spirit. If you think that you can't take it again, you can't handle it any longer, submit to the supreme power. Anything that is chasing you in life, there are two main reasons why. And the whole world is chasing Simply because if you don't do that, you can forever let death die. Everything wants us to sin so that we can activate death. Families, society, communities, everything that you can think about at work side, families, husband, wife, anything is chasing you just to do only one thing, just to activate death. But you can let death die forever because of the power of resurrection. As a matter of fact, when one death come by sin, lift up the blood. And he said, death, go back to death. Because I know what I do for death to come. If what I do for death to come is sin, then death, I command you, go back to death. Don't say I am weak. You are strong in Jesus. Hallelujah. For let the weak say that I am strong. And let the poor say that I am rich. Don't say that I am weak. The same spirit quickens our mortal bodies. It's the same power that brought him out. It's the same power that we are using. There's a power in resurrection. He resurrected to give you that power back. Before then, the Spirit came upon them. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon. The Spirit of the Lord came upon. It was a temporal coming upon. But when he resurrected and he ascended, the Spirit came down. Now he doesn't come upon. He dwells in you. For I will be with you from now until the end of the age. The Spirit has come permanently in you. And this spirit that has come permanently, it is what quickens your mortal bodies. Hallelujah. He is risen. To give you that power back. To overcome. To overcome. To overcome. For the flesh profit nothing. For the flesh give us nothing. The flesh kills. The flesh weakens. But it is the spirit that gives life. Sin can forever activate death. But if you go out of sin, you can forever tell death. Death remain dead. That is the reason why he, he resurrected. For you to know that he has overcome. And what helped me to overcome is what I have given it to you. Hallelujah. Three, to destroy man's fear of death. Hallelujah. To destroy man's fear of death. I don't know why we are so much afraid of death. As a matter of fact, death should be a companion. An unseen shadow that you go out and come in every blessed day with. Fear. Of death. Why would you be afraid if you know that you have a lot of skeletons in your cobwebs? Why would you be afraid? So far that there is something hiding there, you'll be afraid. But resurrection came just to destroy any fear that you have as a child of God concerning death. What has put every woman be now in their home? America, my Lord, my God. 
If in Africa that people are not dying, my Lord, my God. What has put everybody there? It has why that it is good to take the preventives and the precautions very well. The last result is what? But a day will come that somebody will overcome. And that day is today. That Bible say that he is not dead, but he is alive. Woman, you are setting something wrong. Why should you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. Hallelujah. If the person is not here, why should you search for him? If you write down, let me give you an argument. I'm going to bless all of you. I have a plot just inside Osdorf Cemetery. Who will take that plot? Around Capella Tende is a plot I'm giving to you free. Who will take it? I'm talking about cemetery. Hamburg here, the biggest one, even the whole world's biggest cemetery is Osdorf Cemetery. Any cemetery that you know, whether Osu or Odome or Tafo Cemetery, I have a special plot for you in the cemetery. Who will take that plot? Which cemetery do you know? Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is not there in the cemetery. He is alive. Hallelujah. If you will put your loved one, if you will give him any room to sleep, my Lord and my master is not living there in the cemetery. So the angel told the ladies that woman, she the man that you are looking for, even though you came to search for your master, it was a good intention. But the truth is that he is not here. He is risen. Fear is the only thing that is getting hold of every true child of God. Fear. But resurrection overshadow and conquers fear. The fear that has come over you, the resurrection overshadow and overcome fears. Anytime Jesus Christ appeared for his 40 days infallible proof of living, when he appeared to the disciples, the first word from him is that, do not be afraid. That is the purpose of the resurrection. Do not be afraid. Those days, I used to be afraid of death. It's not like modern ones that we can, you know, those days, if you, talk, if you see death, it was very scary. If it's just the bed, the bed that we are going to lay the dead body, you are afraid of the bed. They, have, they told us so many things that if you pass a cemetery in the night, if you are not very careful, you are going to see your ghost. They told us so many, 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 many things about death. And that's why you are still afraid of. The day I got understanding and the truth in God's word, then I saw that death, so you don't have any power at all. If somebody has been able to overcome you, then I've also overcome you. You need not to be afraid, for I am with you. Even if you die now today, if you have good times with him, you will be with him forever. Hallelujah. The only thing that can push you far away from your maker is sin. Don't activate it. Don't activate it. And I see the demons and Satan in Hades shouting and looking at a small light coming to the grave. And the demons telling Jesus, you can't come here. Satan, stop him. And I can hear the demon saying, you have kept us for many years. 2,020 years ago, you have kept every man dead here. We have not seen any light here. But Bible said that the smallest light appeared in the grave. And they were not able to hold it. The smallest light overshadowed everything that was under the grave. I'm talking about the light of this world. The light of God. He is the one that is living in you. Hallelujah. Therefore, where lies your fear? From the very first day that Adam rebelled against God, 
Hades and Shoal. Gehari has never seen any light before. When every man die, we put you there in Shoal. We put you there in the grave. Fearful and scary. If you didn't live good life with him, you will be with him there full of darkness. He says, Pastor, that so long as I am here in this world, I am the light of this world. But one day, Sunday early in the morning, when they kept him there in the tomb, the light shined. The light came out. They couldn't stop the light. Do not let the light in you be dim. Do not let the light in you be destroyed by any fear. Hallelujah. Anywhere that light appears, darkness disappears. The smallest part of light forever will overshadow darkness. Let the light in you keep on shining. That was the purpose of the resurrection. Take fear out. Take fear out. Take fear out. Why wouldn't they be afraid? It was not long. Friday evening, we saw you being hanged there. And as they kill him, they are looking for the disciples as well. So any time when they met, they lock the door. Why would they be afraid? They'll be afraid. Oh, no, you go. The maker of the heavens and the earth, Jesus Christ, the son of the living Lord. He knew very well that they are afraid. So when he appears, the only word, he will tell them, do not be afraid. If resurrection is there and you celebrate, then the resurrection message is very simple. Do not be afraid of COVID-19. Do not be afraid. If there is any dispensation in town to preach about the fear, that you need not to be afraid. I think it is this time. This year Easter is the best Easter I've ever celebrated in my life. This is not the time to be afraid. If he overcame, then you will also overcome. Don't be afraid. Fear. Fear so, fears. I never knew that a time will come. You can't even give your loved one a handshake and a hug. I never knew fear. The end of it is fear. Fear. And fears is what is taking on the whole world. But the message of the resurrection is a very simple message. Do not be afraid. To destroy man's fear of death. To destroy it. To destroy it. Do not be afraid. For he is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is not here. Turn with me right now to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 20. They say 15, 20. There's something small there and then I'm going to pray together with you. If you can take fear out, this year you have overcome. The last enemy, the last enemy of man is death. Because you activated it. So he became your enemy. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When? 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 When he says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who are fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. If by man, man activated death through the instrumentality of Adam, then I have also come to activate also life. To the instrumentality of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is the rock of your ages, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and your personal Savior, ladies and gentlemen, that I want to assure that you have also overcome death. Hallelujah. Now, now, 
Now, it was activated by only one man. Came to the whole world. When one man sinned, the whole world sinned. And when only one man died, the whole world sin was forgiven. When only one man resurrected, all men are resurrected. All in one. Why is your fears? Why is your fears? For all in Adam, for us in Adam all die, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. Am I seeing the word all? Am I seeing the word all? What is the meaning of the word all? All means what? Verse 22, all means what? For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Now, he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. If you don't overcome fear now, I don't know when you can overcome fear again. This is the best era and the nice moment to let fear come out of your heart. Because this is the time that you can even see the vividness of a loved one's dying. Packing people like sardines. Cemeteries are getting full. This is the time to take fear out. If you are afraid, then it is an indication that quit sin. Make good amendment with your life if there's any fear in you. Some people are not doing anything some people have quarantined themselves very well, but still they are getting it. So it is not about the quarantine, it is about the living Jesus living in you. Hallelujah. If that Jesus is in you, then you are alive. Even though when you die, you will live again. For the sake of time, let me give you the next one. Probably you continue next week. The resurrection. There is a purpose for that. To destroy any fear that you have in you. To complete the final act of the redemptive plan of God. Mm. Mm. The final act of the redemptive plan of God. God has planned for mankind. And the only way to complete that plan of God concerning humanity was to resurrect. The purpose of the resurrection. To complete the final act of the redemptive plan of God. Sometimes I'm very little bit skeptical about Christianity. And sometimes I see Christianity and I laugh a little bit. Because we are letting the means to become the end. And the end the means. I was here in the office and one man of God came to me here and I walked him around and he asked me a very funny question. That bishop, please, may I know, don't you have any cross here in the church? Don't you have any Jesus Christ picture here in the church? Cross in the church? A wooden image in the church? A relics in the church? An iconistic in the church. Are you sure that he is living in the picture? Sometimes, if you are not careful, we are turning the means to become the end. And we are turning the end to become the means. We need to be very careful. The man doesn't live in anything that man has used his house to build. He lives in you. Hallelujah. A whole pastor. And I look at him. So I started looking around. If I have Jesus Christ pictures here. 
Or I have any cross. Here's the word. Don't you have cross? Cross. 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 I didn't know whether I should cross my head or I should cross my legs. Cross. He is looking for cross. Before he can know that he has come to the house of God, he is looking for cross. Bishop, don't you have any cross here? Cross. Do you understand the cross? Don't you have Jesus Christ picture here? Do you even know him? He is alive in my heart. He is alive in my spirit. I can paint the whole house here with that relics, with that icons. If I don't know him, I don't know him. Church, today is a resurrecting Sunday. He is risen. He is still calling his children. If you don't know him, today is the nice day for you to really come to realization that if this man indeed died and resurrected again, then when you die, you also resurrect again. Hallelujah. If this man died and resurrected, then when you also die, you resurrect again. I love this scripture from the book of Acts chapter 2, verse number 24. I close with this one. Acts 2, 24. Don't you have a cross here in this church? Don't you have Jesus Christ pictures here in this church? I prefer to put the pictures of even my great mentors that I met and I saw and I met and I eat and I talk with them around. He is bigger than any picture. Acts chapter 2, verse number 24. Peter made a very powerful, remarkable statement. And I want to end up with this. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because... It was not possible that he should be held by it. This Jesus that you kill. It is this Jesus Christ that you people kill. That God raised him and lose the pains of death. Because it was not possible. It was not possible that he remained there in the grave. It was not possible. People, it was sent apart perceived. There was no way that death could have held him into captive. It was not possible. Why? Simply because sin was not found in him. If sin cannot be found in you, then I want to assure you that it also is going to be send a purpose for death to hold you into captive. May the peace of God be with you, keep you, protect you as we celebrate the resurrected Jesus, as we praise him. If there is no sin in you, then it is not possible for death to hold you into captive. It is not possible. He completed the redemptive plan of God concerning mankind. It was not possible. And it's not going to be possible. And I love what Apostle Paul says. For that reason, if I live, I live for him. And even if I should die tomorrow, I'll still die for him. For in all my ways, my life is in his hands. Because I know the resurrected Jesus, he still live and live again. Hallelujah. In case maybe you are here, or you are on the side of my voice, any part of this world, and this beautiful Jesus, oh, the man of Galilee, the rose of Shalom, the morning star of God, the Redeemer, the one that knew no sin, 
but took up the whole world's sin on him. If you don't have any peace with him, this is the time. Say, Brother Collins, I want to know this Jesus so that if I die, I can make peace with him. If you don't have peace with him now, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes they deceive us. Evidently, we hear a cessation of breath. The first news that everybody at all can say is rest in peace. Are you sure that if you die, you are going to rest in peace? Hey. If that is the case, may the Lord bless you that you can rest in peace. But if you don't have peace with him here on this earth now, I'm guaranteeing you that if you cease breath now, you cannot rest in peace. But rather, you rest in pieces. Again, today is Resurrection Sunday. Today is another day of salvation. In case you don't know him. Say, preacher man, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Anywhere that you are, make an amendment. If death was not possible and couldn't hold him into captive, if you take him as your Lord and personal Savior and live with him, walk by him, I can assure you that death can never take you into captive. For we are serving the living and the resurrected Jesus. He is alive. He is alive. Another great opportunity is coming to you this afternoon. Oh, yes, Lord. You cannot rest in peace. You cannot rest in peace. The only people that can rest in peace are the people that had the Prince of Peace in their heart when they died. If you don't know the Prince of Peace, you can never rest in peace. The only thing that gives man peace is the people that gave their life to the Prince of Peace. This afternoon, he is the reason. Still, the arms is open. Behold, I am standing at the back of your door. I am knocking. If any man will open for me, I'll come in and I'll dine with him. This day again is another day of salvation. Do not let Resurrection Sunday pass without knowing Jesus Christ. He is calling you this afternoon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In case still you are not sure where you spend your eternity, another great opportunity is being given to all of us. I don't want us to make noise and shout and scream every blessed day. About he is the reason, he is the reason. Reason to do what? He resurrected to ascend to be with the Father. Are you sure? If you also die and you rise up, will you be with the Father? That is the question of resurrection. Thank you, Lord. How sweet the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he is risen. It's a great evidence that death has no victory over us. You are also going to have victory over death when you see his breath. It's the same power that could change him. It's the same power that is living in you. Thank you. Now lift up your hands anywhere you are under the sound of my voice. And welcome him into your heart. Now Lord Jesus, I need you. Come into my life. I know that you are the resurrection and life. Without you I have no life. Forgive me all my sins. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I need you in my life as never before. Forgive me for all my iniquities. Today I take you as my Lord and personal Savior. For you came on the cross because of me. The 
Thank you for the work on Calvary. Thank you for saving me. For the rest of my life, oh Lord, I will serve you. Even now or forever. In Jesus' mighty name. And if you are here and you are not sure of your salvation, you don't know whether you are making it or you are not making it. It's another time and another chance for you. For an amendment. It's another opportunity for you. Make peace with God before death come. Because that day will be too late. This is the time to make peace with him. Stop the church politics. And stop the lukewarm attitude. Stop the lackadaisical attitude. And make peace with your maker. Make peace with the one that made you. In his own image and his own likeness. For that day of accountability. Your own wife, husband, that you have covenant with you in this world. Cannot even stand for you. Talk less of your sister that we to sing together in a choir. Talk less of your Sunday school teacher. Talk less of your resident pastor. Talk less of your bishop. Talk less about the reverend ministers. That day nobody can say anything for you. If he resurrected and he was ascended and he is seated at the right side side of the father. When you make peace with him, you also have a great opportunity to sit at the right hand side of the Father. Again, today is the day of salvation. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 21, 22. He says, Stand and fight and overcome as I overcame. And if you will overcome, I will grant you permission to sit at the right hand side of the Father as I overcame. People, there's a place for us. Resurrection is a key to that eternal life that you will live again. You are not going to die forever. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding be your portion. In case you are weak in spirit, in case your love for God is going down, this is the time to arise again on your feet. Say, Lord, help me. Let the power of resurrection quicken my mortal bodies. Give me strength, O oh Lord. Revive yourself within me. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Master Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be on your feet anywhere you are. Stand up together with your husband, your wife at home. And begin to pray together with me. Maskata Parusandias. I'm out of this service in the next five minutes. Make a parabu is babuya. The power that came on the grave is the same power that is speaking in your mortal body this afternoon. In the same spirit, in the same grace that has come upon you. Masadu akaparias. Yeyade kabe kasanta di apara kadusas. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let there be an earthquake in my spirit. Let there be an earthquake in my body. Let there be a shake of your spirit, O oh God. Let the resurrection power quicken anything that is dead in our lives. Begin to pray in spirit anywhere you are for the next five minutes. I'm out of this service. Masaka paradadusas. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want you to come out and make fun and make mockery of death. That death has no victory. Death has no power over you. Me shata parusandia. Maka parisanta paparoboshias. Hey, ade kare patesa amato kiri sedia. Harakata tata taria kaparu ya dare badus. Oh, yes, Lord, oh God. If you can use anything, use me, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Maka babashi in the ria de ya taroi. Touch my hands, my hands, and my feet. As never before. As many that are under the sound of my voice, may you receive the quickening of the resurrection. May you receive the quickening of the resurrection. May you receive the quickening of the resurrection. May you receive the power of resurrection. 
may you receive the quicken of resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus. All those things that you couldn't do, all those weaknesses that were pressing you down, the things that you want to stop and you can't stop it, may the power of resurrection quicken it this afternoon, even now or forever. Masa kapare babuki in the rias. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Man, ta 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 We need your cooking, 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 we need your cooking. Quicken us again, oh Lord, quicken us again, oh Lord. Let the power of resurrection quicken us again. We need your cooking. We need your cooking, oh Lord. We need your cooking. Yes, Lord. It's the same power. It's the same power. In the same spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord anywhere you are. Put your hands together for Master Jesus at home. Oh, give glory to him. For the resurrection power. Hallelujah. Give all glory to the Lord. How sweet the name of Jesus Christ. Please look through the screen. And sow your seed. Your tithe and your offering. Just put it in there. As we celebrate Jesus. You can imagine. Be here in the church in the same power that is coming to you at home. Hallelujah. For the Lord is alive. 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 Look at the screen and then just sow your seed right now. As you dance together with your husband, dance together with your wife, dance together with the children and give your offering. Give your offering. Give your offering. I'm watching at all of you. Though that they have their tithe, just sow in there. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll be in the office. Those that want me to pray for you, come over. If not, those that are here, let me pray for you all in the name of Jesus. Lift up that offering and pray over it for you. Lift up that offering and pray over it for you. Lift up your tithe and pray for you for you. He is risen, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey!
We shout the Son of God is coming again.
Father, we thank you for every hand that has given to your kingdom. Bless them in hundredfolds and in thousandfolds. Lord, in times and in moments like this, we need substance as never before. Bless every man and woman that has given to your kingdom. Jehovah in ten thousand folds. Lord, we pray that they will never lack anything that is good in the land of the living. Let your blessings, that you add no sorrow, be the portion of your people. Even now or forever. In Jesus, the most excellent name, do we pray even with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Church, I say God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Officially, we are coming out. We are signing off now. But the fasting officially, we break it this evening. And Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, we will meet again. Wednesday, we are going to go to another dimension of resurrection. And then Friday, we are going to use the resurrection power to pray. And Sunday, we will meet here again. Please don't forget the time. Wednesday, the time is 7 o'clock. And then Friday, the time is 7 o'clock. And Sunday, the time is 11. May the peace of God be with you all. Hallelujah. Uh, today is the birthday of Derek. Derek, happy birthday to you. Priscilla Nanakia Bologna, also happy birthday to you. And then, Oti, Oti. Oti, Kofi, Kofi, Oti. Kofi, Oti. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, Kofi, Oti. Also, happy birthday to you. Wish all of you the best. And I know that by the grace of God, we are going to be free. And that when you come, you can sing happy birthday to you all. I love you. And may the peace of God be with you. Enjoy the next five minutes worship. And then Wednesday, I'll see you again. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding be your portion. My Lord and my God, we come out from this platform, but we are not coming out from your presence. Let that Shekinah glory overcircle your church. Every member of this ministry, Bible said that and none of them were counted lost. None of us will be a victim. None of us will be a casualty. Let your supernatural protection protect every member of this church. King of glory and the Lord of Lords. Let your peace, that surpasses all human understanding, be our portion. Now may the one that bless and add no sorrow, may he bless you and your household this week. This week, anywhere that the sole of your feet will tread on, may Elohim give it to you. You are the head, never settled to be the tail. May the Lord God Almighty order your steps for you. As the steps of the righteous have been ordered by him, may he order your steps. Both your incoming and your outgoing, may the Lord be with you and your household. Even now or forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one that died and rose again triumphantly, do we pray with thanksgiving? Amen. Share the grace with your family. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Happy Easter to you all and happy Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. He is risen. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen.